In this video, we will learn more about flowcharts, and in particular, we will look at how the for loop works. When we talk about the for loop, we actually mean repetition is taking place. With regards to repetition, there are two types of repetition that we can have. The first type of repetition is fixed. In terms of fixed repetition, we know how many times the repetition will take place. For example, if we look at this example, we want to input five numbers. So this is fixed repetition. We want five numbers and we want to find the sum of the numbers. But in terms of the repetition that has to take place to get the numbers, we know the number of times the repetition should take place, which is five times. So to create fixed repetition, you need a counter variable and the counter variable will increment usually by one. It doesn't have to increment by one, but usually it changes and it increases by one. So for fixed repetition, we're going to create a counter. That counter is going to in increase by one each time. And when it reaches five, this will denote that the repetition needs to stop. The other form of repetition is conditional repetition. With conditional repetition, we are unsure of how many times the repetition will actually take place. It depends on when a particular condition is met. So the repetition takes place as long as the condition is true. And the repetition stops when the condition is false. An example here would be to input an unknown number of numbers. In the previous example with fixed repetition, we knew it was five numbers that was fixed. Here, it's an unknown number of numbers. And we are told when the repetition is going to stop, when the number that is input is 999. And let's assume we want to find the sum of the numbers. So the user will give us a list of numbers, but we don't know at what point the repetition will stop. It's only when the user enters the number 999, this will denote the repetition should stop. And then you need to display what the sum of the numbers is. So this is the basic difference between fixed repetition. We know how many times the repetition or the loop will execute, but with conditional repetition, the loop depends when a condition uh, is satisfied for repetition to take place. And when the condition is false, the repetition stops. So let's consider this particular flowchart. We start we have a start and then we've got C. And in this case, C starts off with the value one. We know that this is a decision. And in this case, the decision is based on C, C less than equal to five. If it's true, then we move down. If it's false, you can see it reaches the end. So there's some, something that happens inside in this case, we are outputting the value of C. And here you can now see that there is an increment. The value of C is changing. It's increasing by one. And it's then taking us back up. And now we can clearly see the loop. You can see the repetition that's taking place. And the repetition is based on C. C starts off with a particular value one and it changes each time by one and it stops when C is 
greater than five because when C is less than or equal to five and it's true, then the repetition continues as long as C is less than five. So that will repeat. But the minute C changes to six, then the condition is false and this then terminates the, the repetition. We can see that there's fixed repetition here. The fixed repetition is based on a counter variable. In this case, it's C. C starts at one and it changes. It becomes, it increments it to two, three, four, five. And eventually when it reaches six, it stops. So this is how we're going to implement a for loop making use of fixed repetition. So here's a question. Display all the numbers from one to five. So I need to draw a flowchart. Well, that's what the question wants, to draw a flowchart to display all the numbers from one to five. I know that I should start at one and I should stop at five. I know my starting point, I know my end point. So immediately this is fixed repetition that I'm going to make use of. And I'm gonna create some variable which is gonna start off at one. And then I'm gonna have a condition that's while it's that variable is less than or equal to five, the repetition will continue until the counter becomes more than five, which is then going to stop the repetition. Let's look at how this is implemented. Here, I've got a flow chart. Again, I've got C, uh, that's my variable. C starting off at one. Uh, there's the condition that depends on C. And here's my increment. This is where my increment takes place. So you can see the value or the variable C is changing by one each time. So it's a counter, starts at one, and then it's gonna become two, three, four, five. It's just a counter variable. So this is behaving like a typical for loop where there is going to be fixed repetition. Let's trace through this flow chart using this uh, trace table that I've set up. You will notice I've got the variable C. I've got a column for the variable C. I've got a condition. It's always good to put your condition in your flow chart. And here we will have the value true or false. Is the condition true? Then this is the pathway I will follow. If the condition is false, then I will follow the false branch. And you will always have a column for the output and there are no other variables. So it's a very simple flow chart to work with. So let's start and see how this for loop in the flowchart is actually working. I start at the beginning. C is set to one. So there it is. Here I'm giving C the value one in my flowchart. I keep moving down. I come to my condition is C less than or equal to five. C is one. Yes, that's true. One is less than or equal to five. So I follow the true branch and I'm going to output the value of C, which is one. So my output is going to be one. I then move to C equals C plus one. Here, C increments by one. So it takes the current value and it adds one to it. So the current value is one plus one, it becomes two and C now has the value two. So the value one is now lost because a variable can only hold a single value that value is lost, C is now holding the value two. And we go back up and we come to the condition. Is C less than or equal to five? C is two, it's less than five, so that the condition is true. And let's move down the true branch, right? Down the true branch, output C. So C is two, so I am going to output two. I go to the next box, which is incrementing C by one. 
uh, it takes the current value plus one. So the current value of C is two plus one, it's going to become three. C has the value three, go back up and test the condition. Is three less than equal to five? That's true. Three is less than equal to five. That means I follow the true branch output C. C is now going to be three. That's the new value of C. Increment C, C equals C plus one. Three plus one is now four. I go back up, is C less than equal to five? Yes, that's true. Four is less than equal to five. I output C, so I'm outputting four. C equals C plus one, let's increment four plus one. That becomes five, go back up. Is C less than or equal to five? True, because it's equal to five. So the condition is still true. I follow the true branch output C, which is five. C equals C plus one, C from five, it becomes five plus one, which is six. Now, when I go back up to the condition, is C less than or equal to five? C has the value six, so it's not less than or equal to five. And I follow the false branch, which is that way, and it stops the flowchart. If we examine the values of C, you'll notice it changed from one, two, three, four, five. It eventually got to six, but at that stage, the condition was false and it terminated the loop. This is how a, a for loop typically works. So you've got a, a loop for, you have a counter, in this case, C equals, you have a starting value one, two, and then you have an ending value, in this case, it's five. And then we're going to do some statements. So I'm gonna say do and begin. These are the statements. And you could do whatever statements you wanted to, and then it's going to end. This means that this loop will execute these statements five times. The first value C will take on is one, then it repeats the statements when C is two, repeats the statements when it's three, repeat four, repeat five. And once it reaches the end, it reaches five, the repetition stops. This is a typical example of a flowchart making use of a for loop. Let's look at another question. Let's draw a flowchart to now sum up. We want to sum up all the numbers from one to five. I want to sum up the numbers. So this time the difference is, uh, I'm not just outputting the numbers like I did in the previous case, I was just outputting the numbers. Now I'm summing up the numbers from one to five. That should be straightforward because I know how to set up my flowchart so that it can start at a particular value one and count its way each time moving up to five. And as the counter takes on a particular value, I'm just going to accumulate that particular value in another variable. In this example, we have the variable C, which is set to one. I've got my condition that's less than equal to five. This should be true. We come down that branch that is false, we go along the other branch. And here's my increment, C is assigned the value C plus one. So we know that this is going to behave in terms of a fixed repetition, starting at five, go, uh, starting at one, going up to five. We see the introduction of a second variable called sum that starts at zero. Here there's increment, so that's an accumulator. It's adding up something. What is it adding up? Each time the value of C changes, sum is increment, incrementing the value of C. And here we're finding the average by taking the sum and dividing that by five. Let's do a quick trace and see how this behaves. I'll number the boxes. One, two, three, four, five, 
and six that will make it easier as we trace through it. So let's start at box number one. C takes on the value one, sum takes on the value zero. Box number two, we test our condition is C less than or equal to five, and that is true. And then at box number three, sum is equal to sum plus C. The current value of sum is zero plus C, zero plus one. So sum now has the value one. Box number four, C equals C plus one. One plus one becomes two. So C now has the value two. And we then follow the arrows taking me back up. So that's my loop to box number two. Is C less than or equal to five? That is true. C is less than or equal to five. Sum equals sum, which is currently one plus C, which is two. Two plus one gives me three. C equals C plus one. So that now becomes three. Go back to the top to box number two. Is C less than five? That's true. Sum equals sum, which is now three. Three plus three gives me six. So sum has the value six. C equals C plus one. So three plus one gives me four. Go back to box number two. Is C less than or equal to five? That's still true because C is four. Sum equals sum, which is six plus C. Six plus four gives me 10. And C equals C plus one. That now becomes five. And at this stage, you should know what's going to happen. Box number two, we're testing the condition. It's still true because C is five and the condition is less than or equal to five. So that's true. Uh, I follow that branch C equal sum equals sum, which is currently 10 plus C. So 10 plus five gives me 15. C equals C plus one. C then becomes six. I go back to the top and now my condition, six is less than or equal to five, that is false. So my condition is false. And now I'm going to work out the average. Average is equal to sum divided by five. So here, this is my column for the average. So this is my column for the average and my average is the sum divided by five. So my sum is 15. 15 divided by five is three. So my average is going to be three. So ignore this particular column that was created in error. Uh, the average is now three. That is at box number five. When I get to box number six, this is my output. There's a message, the sum is, so my output is going to be uh, the sum is, and it's printing the variable sum, and the variable sum is 15. So it's going to print the sum is 15. And on the next line, the average is. So it's going to print the average is, and it's printing the variable av, which is this variable av. And what does F contain? If I go to my flowchart, F has the value three, and that's going to print the value three. Remember that whenever I have quotes, these are my messages, and that's gonna be displayed on the screen. And these are my variables. The value inside of the variables will be displayed. I hope this gives you a better understanding of how the for loop repeats a fixed number of times. Uh, a while loop, on the other hand, will behave very differently because it also contains a condition, but the condition that it contains will not be dependent on the loop counter. We see here is a loop that drives the repetition with a while loop. The repetition will not be driven by a counter, it will have a different type of a condition. We will see how that behaves in another video. I hope this video helps. Till the next time, bye.